Hello guys, this is Alexi with Rock and Roll Tennis Camps and today we're gonna continue to talk about volleys in response to Evan's question. And uh, we're gonna start talking about uh, the upper body. Uh, so let's just start, dive right in. So number one thing you need to successfully execute volleys and that is what 99.9% .9 of club players do not do is you have to have continental grip, okay? That's that grip allows you to equally execute forehand and backhand. Okay, that's obviously a gigantic advantage, but not only that, it allows you to hit all the heights in, in the spectrum on the backhands and all the heights in your spectrum on the forehands. And not only that, you also hit overhead with the same grip. So you come to the net, you have forehand, backhand, overhead, and all half volleys. So you're basically covering the full spectrum. The only drawback of that grip is it takes a while to get to get used to. It's, it's pretty weird and that's why most people don't do it. But if you wanna do it well, invest the time, it's well worth it. You will have a much bigger arsenal with it. So that's that's the first thing. Second thing is, is it, let's talk about the wrist. So that wrist needs to be locked in like this in the, in the ready position right from the get-go. So here it is, it's, it's, it's locked in. So from this point, all you will do is you gotta move it to the back end. When it's a back end, you, you do a back end and it stays exactly like that locked in from beginning to end. If it goes to the forehand, you flip it to the forehand and it stays in the same. So what you do not, want to do is to create any variation with your wrist. There's one of the worst things you can do. So that wrist needs to be completely out of the equation as far as the any movement goes. It's it's fully locked in. Okay? So so basically if we take the full arm you have three levers. So you have the wrist, the wrist like we, we just talked about, it's locked in, it's out of the, out of the question. There there is no there's no moving. You, you, it's locked in. Same with the elbow, elbow is slightly bent. So the only exceptions to those is all the specialty shots when you have to be giving a little wrist when it's really low or, or whatnot. And obviously when it's, you have to be on a full stretch, you have to get the elbow out. But assuming the ball is manageable, both of those are gonna be fully locked in. So which leaves the shoulder and that is what you're gonna use. So you're gonna use your your shoulder because bigger muscle group and that gives you much more stability okay so so that's a uh, three three links wrist locked elbow locked shoulder moves so in short the your worst enemy at the net is variation so between the wrist and the elbows you probably have hundreds maybe even thousands of variations and, and the shoulder so you have lots of abilities so variations is just another word for mistake so what you want to have is predictability it's it's exactly angled the same way every time and you redirect it so if you do it correctly you feel like a wall you just gotta the ball comes in you gotta redirect it back okay so one more thing with with, with upper body Beginning needs, needs to be compact. So, so a lot of people do the really big beginning. The racket goes really far. So they basically, the ball comes fast. They're gonna add another power on the ball that's already coming fast. So that creates just a nuclear amount of energy, which most of the time not going in, right? We, we all have done it. You, you know, it, it doesn't work. So swing needs to be very compact so the way I think personally I like to think of that my racket staying in front of my body to, to begin with so that's that that's my first that's my take back so the racket does not cross over my shoulder line so very short the rest I do with the feet and it's gonna be it's gonna do very very little follow-through I'll say probably you know foot and a half two feet of, of a, a follow-through and what your marker should be if you do it correctly the end of the volley 
at the end of the volley, your racket will be roughly parallel to the net. So the racket should not be flopping. If it flops all the way and it ends up perpendicular to the net, that is way too big. So a lot of people do a big beginning. So that they take it back and they do big ending. That's, that's absolutely giant swing. So if the ball comes really fast, you will never make that volley. That's technically not, not even a volley. You're already in a, in a ground stroke, energy generating kind of a format. So here it's a energy redirecting format because we're, we're at the net. That's essentially what volleys are. The ball is, is already coming fast. All you need to do is redirect it back. And that's where the racket has to stay very compact. And I want, one more word about uh, the upper body. It, it's always tilted, so your heels get off the ground. So yeah, that's your athletic position. So no, no straight up standing ever. So you always, you always bent, your knees are slightly bent, your heels off the ground, your body tilted forward, and this is your athletic position. So let me know if I missed anything, but, but those are really, really important. So short follow through, locked wrist, continental grip. You should be in a good shape if you do all those. So let me know if you have any further questions. Until next time, go rock the courts.